welcome back everyone uh, in the in this lecture we will continue with uh, elementary number theory so in the last class uh, we saw the division algorithm and then how how one actually writes uh, gcd of given integers to integral combination of those integers so now uh, we will actually define some more elementary uh, properties of these numbers for example we will start with uh, relatively prime numbers so <coughs> we call uh, two integers they are relative prime if the gcd of ab is 1 okay so here is the definition so so let a comma b being in z such that so ab not both of them are zero okay so then we say a and b are relatively primes if the gcd of ab is 1 and then this definition you can actually uh, generalize to any given finitely many uh, integers not all of them zero so if uh, the gcd of those numbers are 1 okay so you can also talk about uh, relatively primes in pairs or uh, pairwise relatively primes okay so if you start with integers a1 etc an we say <coughs> this is actually uh, pairwise relatively prime if if you take any two of them they are relatively prime the gcd of ai aj is one for all i not equal to j <coughs> so this also can be called relatively prime in pairs okay so suppose uh, gcd of a comma b it is being one so this can be expressed by saying that a and b are co prime okay or a is prime to b so all these terminologies are used uh, in the literature <coughs> so now <coughs> let us start with uh, a and b being uh, co prime integers that means gcd of a comma b is 1 okay so here is a small lemma and it is very important uh, lemma in order to prove for example prime factorization is unique we use this lemma okay we so you start with a comma b in integers such that the gcd of a comma b is 1 <coughs> suppose this a divides bc for some c integer so then what we can conclude immediately that a should divide c okay so because the gcd of a comma b in 1 so they will not have any common divisors so that is why if a divides bc should force that a divides c so how one proves this so recall that gcd of a comma b can be written as integral linear combination of a and b so in particularly we can write one as some a x plus b y for some x comma y inside integers okay so now if you multiply by c on both side you get c equal to a c x plus b c y so now note that a divides a so a divides a will imply a divides a c x so now what is given so given is a divides b c since a divides b c so a divides b c will implies a divides b c y so now if you put them together so this plus this will give you a divides a c x plus b c y so what is it a c x plus b c y is exactly c so which is what we want okay so if a b are co prime if a divides b c then that must imply a divides c so this is called euclid's lemma so this also has a name in the literature so euclid's lemma 
okay so now uh, as a corollary you can also uh, prove the following if uh, a and b are co prime okay as before so gcd of a comma b is being 1 and let's say a divides c and b divides c okay so then what one can conclude one can conclude that a b must divide c okay so i will leave it as exercise to check this so this is not that hard to check okay so once we have this greatest common divisor so that also motivates us to define what is called least common multiple okay so here is the definition of least common multiple so which is uh, denoted as lcm so what is lcm least common multiple okay what it is so again start with uh, uh, two non non zero integers so let a b both are non zero integers we are going to talk about common multiple of a b so better a b be non zero so then the least common multiple which is denoted by lcm of a comma b so this should satisfy two properties first of all it must be common multiple so that means a should divide this and b also should divide this so that means lcm of a b must be common multiple and it is the least positive integer that is multiple of this so that means a divides l and b divides l okay so this lcm first of all is non negative integer okay and if l is non negative then that would imply that l is greater than or equal to lcm of a comma b <coughs> so this is the least positive integer such that a divides l and b divides l. so now it is not hard to prove that there is a very close relationship between LCM and GCD. So, that is actually uh, given in the next lemma. So, what is this? The GCD of AB, okay. So, if you take AB or two, not, two non zero integers, then the GCD of AB times LCM of AB must be exactly equal to the modulus of a b of course this is something you can assume from the beginning a b being positive integers then it is just a b okay so this is again very uh, easy to prove so for example what one can try to prove you take either mod a b divided by lcm of a b and then show that is the gcd or you take uh, mod a b divided by lcm of a b and then try to show that is the gcd Okay, so this is something I will leave it as exercise to check. And uh, here is another important uh, property. So, if you take LCM of multiples, okay, if you take LCM of some multiple of A and then multiple of B, then you get exactly the mod M times LCM of AB. So, because LCM is again being non negative integer so you get this uh, so this is true for all m in agent so these are all some elementary properties <coughs> that actually comes very often okay so now uh, so with this uh, we will actually uh, conclude the divisibility so now what we do we actually start with this uh, congruences so this is something i introduced using the cosets a plus b z okay maybe i will actually start with uh, equivalence relations and then using that we will actually see what congruence means okay so let's first uh, st uh, start with the definition of congruences and then uh, uh, maybe this is one of the very first example that you see uh, as equivalence relation so maybe we will actually see the properties of uh, this congruence classes and then from there we will generalize the sequence relation okay so what is uh, congruence actually so again congruence uh, that you talk about modulo m so it's arithmetic uh, modulo m so you start with some s m being uh, non zero integer or you can safely assume to be positive integer there is no harm 
so what is the definition so you fix m which is a natural number so you can take it to be non zero integers but still one can replace with minus m and then take it to be in positive integer there is no issue so you take a b being two integers okay so you want to say that a is congruent to b modulo yep okay so so the notation wise a congruent to b modulo yep so this is the notation so when you want to say a is being congruent to modulo m so if and only if if this m divides a minus b okay so whenever this m divides a minus b then you denote this a is being congruent to mo b modulo m okay so basically if you think in terms of uh, remainders okay so uh, the remainder that you get by dividing okay a by m and b by m both should be same okay so let's let's see so you have a so you divide by m so you get q1 m plus some r1 so 0 less than or equal to r1 less than m and then you divide by uh, m so you divide b by m and then you get a remainder r2 which is again less than m so then what happens so if m divides a minus b so then that would imply that immediately that m divides <coughs> this q1 minus q2 times m plus r1 minus r2 okay so now you can see that this is already multiple of m okay so that means so you can write rewrite this as q1 minus q2 times m plus r1 minus r2 equal to some q times m so now since m divides the right hand side m divides the first uh, term in the sum so that would imply that m must divide this r1 minus r2 but note that r1 and r2 both are actually less than m so without loss of generality you can assume r1 is greater than or equal to r2 in particularly r1 minus r2 will become greater than or equal to 0 so now r1 minus r2 is being non negative integer and clearly this is smaller than m so that means it cannot be multiple of m unless it is zero okay so that forces that this r1 is equal to r2 okay so from this uh, condition m being m divides a minus b precisely gives you that the remainder that you get by dividing a by m and by dividing b by m they must be same so that is what you are encoding as a is congruent to b modulo m okay so since <coughs> we don't need to really compute r1 r2 to see this we can say in terms of a and b so so we just take this as definition m divides a minus b okay <coughs> now what are all the properties this uh, congruence or the congruent uh, will satisfy okay so the properties are elementary i will leave it as exercise so this is something i will leave it to you to check so you start with let's say a b c d integers as before you fix m in n so now what happens if a is congruent to b modulo m again all these properties can be proved using the divisibility properties okay so now a is congruent to b modulo m that means m divides a minus b then that would immediately imply that m divides b minus a so in particularly b is congruent to a modulo m okay but before that it is easy to see a is congruent to a modulo m okay this is true for all a so so a is already fixed so let's not worry about it so this is called reflexive okay reflexive property so this is called symmetric property 
So, now there is this transitive property ok the transitive. So, what transitive says if A is congruent to B modulo M and B is congruent to C modulo M. So, then that should imply A is congruent to C modulo M. Okay, so, how you prove for example, M divides A minus B and M divides B minus C. So, then you add them you get A minus C. Okay. So, not only that, uh, so this is all with respect to, uh, so these are all properties of uh, this relation that is A congruent to B modulo M that relation. So, it is reflexive, symmetric and transitive. So, on top of it this uh, congruence also well behaved with respect to other arithmetic operations. For example, you have addition and multiplication in your integers. So, we can also see how it is behaved with respect to them. So, then uh, you can see that if A is congruent to B modulo M and C is congruent to D modulo M. So, then you immediately get that a plus c is congruent to b plus d modulo m ok and more generally what one can do one can actually take any combinations ok more generally you can take a x plus c y. So, sorry uh, a is congruent to b So, A x plus C y is congruent to B x plus D y modulo A. So, you can add component wise ok. So, you get this and then you can also multiply them for example, A c will be congruent to B d modulo A ok. So, with respect to multiplication, with respect to addition, this congruence is actually well behaved. So, now it is not difficult to see if D device M, ok. So, then A congruent to B modulo M will imply A congruent to B modulo D, ok. So, and A congruent to B modulo M. So, this will imply that uh, A congruent to B modulo D. And similarly, you can also multiply there is no issue. So, if A congruent to B modulo M and then C is non-zero. So, then you can multiply A C congruent to B C modulo now M C. Okay, you can scale all of them. So, now, so all these properties are satisfied because integers you have addition multiplication and so on. So, this congruence is actually well behaved with respect to. Them. So, now uh, what we are interested in we are interested in complete residue system modulo m ok. So, we already seen that for example, if you take this m which is a positive integer ok. So, then if you consider uh, dividing each integer by m. So, then you will be actually getting uh, this residues ok and then we have seen that this residues can be between 0 and m minus 1. So, but uh, this also can be changed to 1 to m or 2 to m plus 1 and so on ok. There are many system of residues you can talk about ok. The standard ones. So, what is the meaning of that? The meaning is this ej can be partition into for example, m ej union m ej plus 1 union m ej plus 2 and so on union <coughs> disjoint union m ej plus m minus 1 ok. So, in particularly this 0, 1, 2 etcetera plus m minus 1 so, this set has this uh, unique property. So, what is this property? So, given any integer ok. So, this is actually you can call it complete 
residue residue system modulo m why because given any integer y in z okay there exist exactly 1 x from this 0 1 2 etc m minus 1 such that y is congruent to x modulo m okay so now if you think about it this you can generalize to any x1 etc x okay so here is the definition so you take any m number of because there should be at least m residues okay that is what we have seen so you take x1 etc xm so these are all uh, some subset of integers so this is called okay complete residue system modulo m if given any y inside z there should exist xi such that y is concurrent to xi modulo m okay so it should lie inside that. so more say, theoretically you can see that so this is exercise z can be written as x1 plus m z okay and this is exactly one so it's unique so this becomes disjoint x2 plus m z union etc union x m plus m z okay for example so we we'll take it as exercise so if you if you take 1 etc m so this is one complete system of radio crs mod m similarly you can also translate and then you take 2 to m plus 1 so that is again another complete residue system okay like like this you can, you will be able to produce many of them okay so now we have some understanding of this uh, congruence classes okay uh, so let's let's prove uh, actually really what it actually does to uh, the set of integers okay as i said before so this congruence is indeed a relation that you define on in integers and that satisfy reflexive symmetric and transitive property so using this property you can prove that this set of integers can be divided into some smaller equivalence classes okay so those are all called congruence classes so first uh, we will define what is the residue class or the congruence class and then we will see like how one can get this decomposition okay so as before fix this m which is an in, which is a natural number and then let a is an integer okay so we want to talk about this class a with respect to m so this is the residue class okay so this is the residue class or the congruence class okay modulo m so residue class of a modulo m okay so what it is it is consisting of all those integers b such that b is congruent to a modulo m so basically what are you telling you are telling that so this is a m is nothing but so those integers b such that when you divide by m the remainder that you get from b and you get from a they are all same okay so now if you think about it this is same as saying you collect those integers z from other definition so b is being congruent to a modulo m will tell you that m must divide b minus a so now if m divides b minus a then that would imply that b minus a can be written as some m q so then you can see that then b is nothing but m q plus a so now you can vary any q still you will be getting uh, those numbers so it's easy to see that m q plus a is inside the residue class m for all q is in z and given any b 
inside this this residue class should look like this so that forces that this residue class must be of the form uh, this a plus m m z okay or otherwise a plus m q q is in integers okay so now this is the residue class associated with a so here is the lemma so which actually justifies so why it actually partitions the integers okay so if you take two residue class okay one is associated with a and another one is with b so let a be inside integers and as before fix this uh, m in n okay so then the only one of the following can happen okay so either we have the class with respect to m the residue class of a with respect to m is equal to the residue class with respect to uh, a residue class of b with respect to m okay or they are disjoint the intersection will be empty okay so only one of the following happens either they are equal or they are disjoint so how do you prove this so this just uses the elementary properties of the uh, the congruence relation okay so if it is empty the intersection is empty then there is nothing to prove so start with intersection being non empty okay assume that this bracket m intersection bracket b this is non empty so that means there exists c such that c is congruent to a modulo m and c is congruent to b modulo m okay so then this immediately implies that a is congruent to b modulo m okay so this is the first observation so now if you take so we will climb if you x is in okay inside this residue class a modulo m then you can easily see that x is congruent to a modulo m okay now since a is congruent to b modulo m and x is congruent to a modulo m this will force that x is congruent to b modulo m so this is just obtained from transitivity transitivity and uh, reflex symmetric so now this will imply that x is inside the class b m and similarly you can retrace if x is in class b m so that that will imply that x is congruent to b modulo m again together with a congruent to b modulo m would imply that x is again in class a m so this proves if x is in this class a importantly if x is in this class b modulo m okay so that proves that these two sets are same okay so that means you can see that if i take two residue classes either it is equal or they are their intersection is empty they are completely disjoint okay so now what we can do we can actually write ej as definitely union of all those residue classes because we can simply take a is from ej itself okay now if you think about it using that earlier lemma okay so this uh, sets this bracket a m either they are equal or uh, the intersection is being empty okay so that will force us that so you can actually take all possible uh, uh this uh, representatives okay so you take this ej so you have defined this relation on this ej okay so that will actually partition ej into these subsets residue classes of a modulo m okay so now 
what you can do you can actually look at all possible disjoint sub subsets okay you can pick one representative from each subset and then you can make this another what is called this uh, sets of representatives. So, if you think about it this complete system of residues okay, that we have defined. So, this x1 etcetera xm. So, this is a complete uh, residue system modulo m. Na. So, that exactly does that uh, representative job. Okay. So, a moment thought can tell you immediately that with that definition this z can be actually written as disjoint union of this x i bracket m where i ranging from 1 to m. So, this is all disjoint. So, z can be written as x 1 m disjoint union etc. disjoint union x m. Okay. So, now we already seen that how the bracket a m looks like this just looks like a plus m z. So, in particularly you wrote z as x 1 plus a z sorry m z disjoint union etc. disjoint union x m plus m z. Okay. So, that is what indeed we have proved. So, this uh, complete system of residues motivated from getting this uh, representatives of this uh, partition of EZ with respect to this concurrence classes. Okay. So, this is the set of representatives we can choose to be the complete system of residues. Okay, so, let us do some examples then it will become more clear. Let us take m to be 4, okay, then it is clear that z can be written as 4 z union 4 z plus 1 union 4 z plus 2 union 4 z plus 3. Okay. Similarly, we can also write z as for example, let us say 9 plus 4 z okay, union 8 plus 4 z. So, union let us take 11 plus 4 z. Okay. So, this corresponds to 1, this corresponds to 0. So, this corresponds to if you divide by 4 then it is 8, it is 3. Okay. So, only 2 we need. So, you can take it to be for example, 14 plus 4 is okay. 3 times 4 is 12. So, this corresponds to 2. So, all these residue classes are covered. Okay. Basically, what I want to say this is same as 1 plus 4 is it and this is same as 4 is it and this is same as 3 plus 4 is and this is same as 2 plus 4. Okay. So, basically we are changing only the representatives. The residue classes stays same. Okay. So, now uh, the from what we have done so before, so we have we are taking this residue classes and then we are adding them. Okay. To add them it is enough to add some elements from them. Okay. For example, if you use this notation, we want to define what is called this residue class of A modulo m plus the residue class of B modulo m. So, this is we want to define. So, this is a set, this is a set. So, you want to define this addition between these two sets. Okay. So, the natural way to do it, so you have already as addition in integers. So, this addition should be kind of uh, inherited from the addition that you have already from integers or it should actually uh, agree with the addition that you have already in the integers. So, if you so you are tempted to define this is equal to a plus b class m. Okay. 
and then if you think about it this is actually well defined because if you take other another representative so what is the meaning of well defined so if you take another class a equal to class a dash and then class b equal to class b dash so then we should prove that this class a b is same as class a dash b dash so which is true from the elementary properties of this congruences because this tells that m divides a minus a dash and then here m divides b minus b dash then that would imply that m divides a plus b minus a dash plus b dash okay so this is equivalent to this so that is why the addition that we have defined before agrees with this addition so recall that this class a is nothing but uh, a plus m z and this class b is nothing but b plus m z so we defined addition between these two sets as a plus m z plus b plus m z is exactly equal to a plus b plus m z okay so this is something happening inside integers but this is somewhat agrees with the addition that we want to define between these uh, sets okay so treating them as elements and then we are defining so this is something i already shown you before like how to do this addition modulo m okay so basically i am trying to convince you that if you use this congruence notation again you get the same thing okay so this is uh, kind of actually revises uh, the definition of uh, this congruences either one can use this set notation or one can use this a congruent to b notation so both are equivalent in both ways you can see that all the arithmetic that you do modulo m coincides okay so basically now just recall what we did with this arithmetic modulo m so we partitioned z into m subsets okay disjoint subsets which is m z disjoint union 1 plus m z disjoint union etc disjoint union m minus 1 plus m z so then what we did we constructed this new set which we denoted by z modulo m z so what is this this is a subset of power set of z okay so which consisting of these as elements okay basically is all the residues you take it all the residue classes so what it is if you think about it this is exactly m z 1 plus m z etc m minus 1 plus m z so there are m elements in this set okay the cardinality of z modulo m z is exactly m so then we define addition here so we define addition on this z modulo m z so which is a finite which is a finite set so how the addition is defined you take a plus m z and then you define this addition maybe put dot here b plus m z okay maybe i will call it addition modulo this m so this is defined to be a plus b plus m z so this is how we are defining the addition for example in the congruence class notation if you take this uh, residue class a modulo m then the addition is defined to be you take this residue class a plus residue class b then it is defined to be a plus b yeah okay so this is how we have defined the addition so now what we want to say with respect to this addition this z modulo m z with respect to this addition forms a group so this is indeed an abelian group okay so later we will see this is indeed cyclic group okay because this 1 plus m z 
so which is same as this class 1. So, this actually generates this EZ modulo emission. So, I will leave it to, to check uh, this form subillion group ok. Basically, you have to prove that this addition is well defined which is already we proved because this addition is inherited from the addition uh, on integers. So, it will satisfy associativity, commutativity for free. Then if you take this m z which is 0 plus m z, so that is corresponding to this uh, residual class 0 modulo m. So, that will be the identity element and given any uh, residual class, so let us call it a m. So, then the inverse of this will be exactly minus a m. Okay. So, for example, if you want to write it uh, for this uh, 1 to sorry 0 to m minus 1. So, if you take a plus m e z where a is coming from 0 to m minus 1, then the, the inverse of this will be just m minus a plus m e z. So, this will be the inverse in your in your group. Okay. So, now this proves the existence of identity and sorry existence of inverse the identity is being uh, m e z. So, it proves existence of identity and then associativity and uh, commutativity comes for free. So, that will make this z modulo m e z is a group. So, now you can see that this 1 plus m e z is indeed generates, generates your, your group why it is the case because by adding it repeatedly for example, if you add it twice. So, then you get uh, 2 m e z and then if you add it enough time you get all the elements of uh, e z modulo m e z. If you add it uh, 3 times, so then you can see that you get 3 m e z and so on. So, this actually gives you all the elements of m e z z model m e z by repeatedly applying 1 plus m e z. So, once you reach for example, m times, so then you will get m plus m e z, you get back what is called identity. Okay? So, it is it's basically a cyclic group generated by this element. So, with this exponential rotation, if you call this is a, then this is a, a square and so on, a power m minus 1 and then a power m which is identity. So, that is what we use. Okay, so, we are uh, running out of time. So, I will uh, stop with this. So, here we have this one very good example of uh, cyclic group and later we will prove that uh, any finite cyclic group must be of this form okay, up to isomorphism. So, I will stop here. So, thank you.